Alright oh, guys, yesterday I made a very in-depth tutorial on how to make this scene from scratch. Today I'm going to do the same thing but it's going to be a much faster version for those of you that might be more advanced with Blender. If you do find any bits that you don't quite get, just refer to yesterday's tutorial and that should answer any questions. And if you want much faster cycles renders, check out Turbo Tools in the link in the description below. So I'll delete the default stuff and I will add some text and then I'll make it into a geometry and rotate it around. I'll open up the geometry node editor and add a new network and then I'll put down distribute points on faces node. I'll set it to poison disk for more even distribution. I'll add a set point radius node and I'll expose the radius to the front end of the modifier. And then I'll use the radius in combination with multiply and divide nodes to set automatically the distance min between the particles and the density max. And then I can tweak the radius on the modifier and it will automatically update the distance min and the density max with those math nodes. The spreadsheet shows I've got too many particles to work with in the viewport, so I'm going to make two versions, one for the render and one for the viewport using a switch node and an is viewport node. So I'll make two identical groups and expose the parameters so that I can use lower values for the viewport than the final render. To start modifying the position of the points, I'm going to use a set position node and then use a noise to manipulate the offset. I'll use a vector math node to multiply the displacement amount and then I'll also use a time node to control the speed of the noise using fourth dimension W input. And I'll expose those to the front end of the group so that we can control them in the modifier. I'll also expose the scale and the distortion of the noise to the modifier as well. I'll group all that together. I'll expose the values I want access to to the front of the group. Change any vectors to float so I only get one input on the front end and I'll rename them all. Inside the group I'll add a second vector math node set to multiply which we can use as a master controller to change the displacement of all the noises that we're going to add. And we'll expose that to the front end of the group and also the front of the modifier as well. I'll just play with the settings now until I get some basic movement. I'll duplicate the noise twice and I'll expose the settings of each noise to the front of the modifier so we can control them separately. And then I'll use those parameters I've exposed to the modifier to modify each of the three noises to give the effect that I want. The effect I'm aiming for is that the first noise is going to be small movement, the second one is going to be medium movement and the third one is going to be the larger movement. I'll set up cycles and I'll add a world environment as well and then I'll set up the camera so it's looking towards the position of the particles at the end of the animation and then I'll give the particles a material and I'll use the factor of the first noise in the geometry node, I'll store that as an attribute and then use that attribute in the material to control variations of colour of each particle. I'll then add a plane so we can use that as the ground and I'll project the HDRI environment onto it using an empty that's in the same location as the camera. Putting the mapping and the environment texture node from the world environment into a group and then using that on the material will ensure that if I modify the rotation in the, in the world it will also modify the rotation in the material on the plane as well. I'll use adaptive subdivision on the plane in combination with displacement on the material to emulate grass blades so that we get the effect of grass in front of the 3D geometry. To ensure the adaptive subdivision doesn't produce a different result on each frame or when the camera zooms in and out, we'll use a second camera and set that to be the dicing camera so that the grass doesn't flicker. We'll aim the second camera where the rendering camera will be looking at the end of the animation so that's where we'll get the most subdivisions and the grass will look the best when the rendering camera becomes static. We'll make the plane into a shadow catcher so that we only see the shadows on it. I'll set the frame range. I'll set a keyframe for the master displacement at the end of the animation to zero. I'll animate a sweeping rotation for the camera and then I'll animate the text so that it's flying along always in view and also animate the focal length of the camera and play that back and now I'll animate the master displacement of the text so that it's fully displaced and animating all the way through until near the end 
when it will finally, over a few frames, turn back into the text. And then I'll use the graph editor to just modify the keyframes of the camera and the focal length to make sure the particles are always in view. We'll turn on the shadow catcher pass, the environment pass, and the denoising pass. We'll set the render settings. I'll do a test render in the compositor. I'll use an alpha over to recombine the environment, and then I'll use a mix node set to multiply to add in the shadow cacher. I'll then use the scopes and some RGB curve nodes to make sure that all of the pixel values fall within the range of zero to 100. I'll make sure that I set color management to view transform standard, look none, exposure zero, gamma one. I'll add some audio in the video sequencer editor. I'll then set up the blender output to be an FFmpeg and I'll make sure that I enable the audio codec as well. I'll do a quick test render and I'll turn on motion blur. And to speed up scene calculation at the beginning of each rendered frame, I'm gonna turn on persistent data in the render settings under performance, and that will keep the large HDRI image in VRAM. And then we'll go to the render menu and choose to render the animation. And there we go, so not a bad result considering how fast I did that one. By the way, this video was all in real time. None of it was sped up. That's how fast I work. And now you've got that modifier, you can use it on any object in your scene. So maybe an animated car chase or some sort of character animation. Uh, but if you do use it and you share it on social media, it will really help out the channel if you also share a link to this tutorial or yesterday's as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.